Hey guys, it's Anne over at Plant Obsessed, and we're going to look in on the African night crawlers in the vermi bag, Lil Mammoth. Alright guys, if you're new to this channel, um, this is uh, my upstairs worm bin. Uh, African night crawlers are tropical, and my basement is not tropical. So I have been keeping them up here in a bag system for, I don't know, more than a year. And it's become necessary simply because the basement is, in the, in the wintertime especially, is very, very um, cold. So now, if you go back and watch the other video for this, this was regular dry paper, and look how moist it is right now. Uh, in the plant room this morning, aka worm room, it is 82 degrees and 50% humidity. So let's take a look. Now last time we fed watermelon, so let's see what we've got here. We were hoping for a worm ball. So let's just move over all of that paper, cardboard, and see what we've got. Looks like we got a lot of worms right here up top. Also, if you're new, these African night crawlers um, have sort of transformed over time into much smaller worms. Um, I don't know if it's due to lack of space or what, uh, but they were not. They were the size of pencils when I first got them, and now, of course, you can see that they are not pencil size. But we are getting a nice worm ball from all of that um, watermelon. Sometimes the African night crawlers aren't necessarily completely um, impressed with nitrogen foods like fruits and vegetables. They do go through an enormous amount of bedding. Um, I have a, a bin of pre-made bedding that I keep right next to this Fermi bag for exactly that reason. Uh, they have to have their own supply of bedding um, ready to roll all the time because they go through, I probably feed a gallon to two gallons of new bedding almost every single time I come in here. So let's see, uh, going backwards in videos, uh, last time I fed three huge slices of watermelon, three or was it four? I don't remember. Um, and then topped it off with dry cardboard, um, anticipating that the, um, the watermelon would create quite a bit of uh, moisture, uh, maybe too much, and that I might need to have some sort of a, a buffer to um, soak up all of that extra moisture. So it looks like it has worked, and you know, the paper is damp, and the watermelon is almost gone. I'm just finding ever so slight, again, corn's still here. Um, we're keeping track of corn. A lot of people who are new like to keep track of how long does something last in my worm bin. And uh, corn cobs are one of those things that you can very well expect to see for six months. Um, so as you can tell, they've managed to get inside of here and are eating out whatever goodness there is in the middle of a corn cob. But we check on that when we come in and look at the bin. And uh, we also look in on the avocado pits, which usually take, again, about six months to fully break down. Um, I think everything moves faster in the summertime because of the nice warm temperatures. Um, but I'm not sure if you can really tell the difference, but this side is almost a perfect worm bin consistency now that I've had that uh, watermelon in here. Um, there's very little of that watermelon left after a week, and that's also to be expected because things that have high water content don't last very long in a worm bin. So I'm just churning things up here. Um, I, you know, I had a comment from one of my viewers saying that, you know, you don't really need to do this because worms aerate soil, and that's literally what they do. And um, 
trying to be as supportive as I can to new people. Uh, this is not the native environment for worms. This is, you know, an artificial environment, and you oftentimes will see anaerobic conditions if you do not participate in aerating the bin. So that's one thing I did wanted to bring up was that uh, this is an artificial environment for these worms. This is not normally what they would see in the wild wherever the wild is for African nightcrawlers. So, um, or for any other kind of worm species for that matter. So you absolutely do have to participate in taking care of them. Um, like this is a bag system. So it will dry out a little faster because the fabrics are uh, made out of fabric. And it also is deeper than what most of these kind of species will deal with. And not to mention, nobody usually drops a whole watermelon and expects the worms to take care of it for them. So making sure that everything stays nice and fluffy honestly is the best for the worms. Um, if you were to leave it alone and expect them to aerate the whole thing on their own, you may end up finding that your worms are living in an anaerobic condition and that the worms may just run away. And African nightcrawlers in particular are in a bag system for that exact reason, because they do tend to be nosy or, or whatever. They do, even under the best conditions, they will try and leave their bin to go see what else is on. Uh, you know, in the surrounding area. So I have found that the only way I can keep them is in a bag system. So right now I am just incorporating all of that bedding that I put in last time. I'm trying to get on a schedule of harvesting this bin about once a month now. It's been going for six months. And the first harvest that I did, I did not use any of the castings. Uh, everything went right back in the bin. And the second harvest, which was I think two or three weeks ago, here are my sticks, um, it was two or three weeks ago, uh, we were able to harvest or retain the harvest of about 50 percent. So 50 percent went back in the bin and 50 percent went out in the garden. Um, so anytime that there's a not a completely evolved system, you know, you, you have to expect that, that your first couple of harvests are not going to be glorious finished castings. That is just the way it is. Um, when you're in a, a tote system, uh, like I have in my basement, most of the time everything is done pretty much at the same time. Uh, whereas in a bag system like this, the idea is that slowly over time, the unfinished things at the top, um, no, that's not what I mean. The stuff at the bottom will slowly become more and more finished, and then, you know, your least finished things are at the top, and slowly they move to the bottom as they are finished. Um, but that takes a little while. And since I use cardboard um, Amazon boxes, I have a, a shredder that does the big, thick Amazon boxes. Uh, that does take a little bit longer to break down, even though I pre-do my bedding. And um, I can put a link to the bedding video in here for you. Um, so the bedding is not just straight paper most of the time, like I did last time. It is paper, cardboard, coconut coir. Um, I do put a little kelp meal in there as well as some grit uh, with water and molasses and I usually let it age for a week or two before I try and use it. That way the microbes have had a little bit of a start on here. So today I am going to give them another feeding. Uh, last time we did it on the side and this time I think we're going to go to the far side which may not have as much moisture because I purposefully left um, a space because I did give them so much watermelon and I was concerned that um, 
at some point it might not, you know, as things degrade, they can heat up um, or what have you. So I wanted to make sure the worms had someplace else to go um, that was comfortable to them. So today we're going to give them an unfortunate, well, it's, not, it's unfortunate for me, it's fortunate for them. But sometimes when you do that service where you order your groceries at Walmart, and uh, they bring them out to your car for you and it's lovely because it's raining and you don't have to go deal with the people of Walmart and, and stuff. Uh, sometimes they don't pick the best produce and I had intended on taking these to work um, for my lunch uh, but when I got to Monday and I went to grab the bag almost all of them were covered in mold and of course after I don't know, three or four days, I doubt Walmart's going to be like, yeah, sure, bring back your bag of oranges that are rotten. Um, so I was like, well, whatever. The worms will get them. So it, those have been frozen. Uh, and then now I'm adding on top of there some green pepper um, heads and stems, mango peel, banana peel, and a little bit of onion. I'm going to spread that across the back part over there. This should be fun. When we see this mango the next time, usually the baby worms just love to hang out in the mango. So, um, as I said before, the... In fact, I don't even know what that is. Hmm, interesting. Um, I'm not the only one who puts things in the bag, so it could be anything. So anyway, that's what they have for this coming week. If you have any questions for me or any content that you would like for me to do or things you or topics you'd like me to discuss, put that in the comments below. I love having new ideas uh, to talk about things and um, also to explain my process further because it may not necessarily always come to my mind. Uh, I like to hear your suggestions. All right, guys. Well, if you like the video, give it a muddy thumbs up. If you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And if you want to be notified exactly when I do everything that I do, bring that bell icon. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody, have a good day.